Hey guys, namaste. So we're going to go over the breakdown and structure of half twist today. It's a seated spinal twist. Um, there's a ton of great benefits from this posture. It's great for strengthening the spine, for loosening the vertebrae. Uh, it's a great way to get a good twist of the organs. So you're activating the kidneys, which helps to clean impurities out of the blood system. You're activating the liver. Um, we're activating our intestines, which helps to speed up and regulate digestion. So we have a ton of really, really great benefits. We're going to go ahead and start out with our legs extended forward. So we're going to flex our feet into staff pose. We're going to tuck our tailbone out behind us, lengthening up through our spine. So let's start with our right leg extended forward. Let's bend through our left leg, and you're going to continue with that straight, tall spine. We're going to take our left foot to the outside of the right knee. And then if you feel like you would like to advance this posture just a little bit more, our right foot can swing around to the outside of the left hip. So I want you to start to feel that levelness to the hips. So if you feel like you're going off to one side, I would suggest taking your leg forward again. So we're going to twist two directions. We're first going to take our left arm long to the inside of the left calf. Our right hand's going to move behind the spine. We're going to inhale, lengthen first. Exhale, add your twist and look out behind you. Then you're slowly going to send your gaze out over the front shoulder. We'll unwind to the front. This time, right arm is going to hug our left knee. Our left hand is going to move behind the spine. We're going to inhale, lengthen, exhale, add your twist, gaze behind. Keeping that tall spine, we send our gaze over the front shoulder. We slowly unwind to the front. Our right leg is going to go ahead and extend out, and our left leg is going to move forward. So if you need to, go ahead and readjust the hips. This time we're going to keep our left leg long, we're going to bend to the right. Right foot to the outside of the left knee. This time if you'd like to, left foot can swing around to the outside of the right hip. Let's go ahead and get level through our hips, tall through the spine. Let's take right arm long to the inside of the calf, left hand moves behind the spine. We inhale, lengthen, exhale, add your twist, gaze back. Go ahead and send your gaze out over the front shoulder. We'll slowly unwind to the front. This time, left arm hugs our right knee. Right hand moves back. We inhale, lengthen. Exhale, add your twist. Look out over the front shoulder. Slowly unwind. And we're going to take our legs forward. Oh, the biggest tip I have to offer you about a half twist is I really want you to notice your spine. And so each time I say inhale, we lengthen, right? Well, a lot of times people are more worried about their twist and they don't really notice their spine and if it's a lengthening or, or rounding out. So one of the biggest safety tips I can give you out of any, any twist in general, you always want a really long spine because then you're protecting your vertebrae. You also want to keep a contraction to the abdomen so the navel's always pressing into the spine so you're engaging for that mulabandha. So let's go ahead and take a half twist. So my right arm is wrapping around my left knee. My left knee is moving behind the spine. Watch the difference. If I inhale length and exhale twist, as opposed to keeping my spine rounded and then trying to add my twist. So one, I'm not going to get back as far. I'm not going to receive as much of a benefit through my spine. And I have scoliosis, so I know more than anyone, or I can relate to it at least, that it can be really, really hard to work against any uncomfortable rounding to the spine. It's really important to get it straight and tall. So you really want to lengthen because if you keep that spine round and add your twist, the chances of you slipping a vertebrae or pinching a nerve increase about, oh, probably like 80%. So you really want to think about lengthening and then adding your twist. If you have a lot of tension through your hips, you're going to want to elevate. And especially if you have tension in the low back as well, or in the hamstrings. A lot of people don't have bolsters, but most people do have pillows at their house. So you could choose a low elevation, or just more support for the tailbone, or you could fold your pillow in half, and sit on it to get a little bit higher elevation. But even though your hips are elevated, you still need to think about sending your tailbone back, so getting that really, really long spine. 
So let's go ahead and let's take our right foot in toward the left hip and then our left foot to the outside of the right knee. Unless you're feeling really, really tight, then I want you to keep that right leg forward. But you'll notice that the hips are elevated. As you add your wrap and as you reach behind, you're going to have a lot more um, motion and movement and ability to add that rotation because if you're really tight through your hips and tight through that low back, your spine is going to round out. And what we just talked about was keeping the spine really long. So if you're down to the floor and there's no way you're going to keep your spine long, it is very important to elevate your hips. Because then you're going to get more of a rotation, more length, and more of a restorative option. We're actually going to go ahead and make this supine. So you're going to roll down and then we're going to have our pillow again. We're just going to take it off to the left side so it's right by the hips. So this one's going to be different than when we were seated. This time your right leg's just going to cross on top of the left rather than having the feet positioned around the hips. So the left sole of the foot is going to be neutral and the right leg is just going to drop off to the side. We're going to let our arms go long, shoulder height. We're going to let the knees drop off to the left, rest onto that pillow, and then send your gaze out to the right fingers. So whichever way the legs are going, your face is always looking that opposite direction. So let your body be really heavy. And in any restorative posture, we are going to take that for minutes at a time rather than just breath. So in like a hatha or vinyasa or um, those types of classes, we're usually just going to be moving with our breath and you might hold something for a little while, but it's not going to be for minutes at a time. In restorative, it's about allowing your body to naturally take over, like gravity kind of put things back into position. So with those types of postures, you're going to get really comfortable and just breathe through it. <laughs> so thanks so much for stopping by. Um, again, if there's uh, if you'd like to see any more videos like this, visit me on my site, www.fitbodyclearmind.com. Thanks so much, and namaste.